Hi everyone! Today we will talk about gradient descent. In machine learning, we use gradient descent to update the weights of our model and to minimize the loss. When I think of gradient descent, I like to imagine an airplane decreasing altitude until it gets close enough to the ground to start with the landing procedures. And while the pilot can go in any direction and choose from many different ways of reaching the same point, only one of those ways is the most efficient or the most optimal, and gradient descent will help us find it. In this tutorial, we will use a slightly different model from our perceptron, mainly because gradient descent takes in a decimal output or prediction, which can be any number between 0 and 1, for example, 0.68. This while perceptron returns a binary output of either 0 or 1, which will not work here. But fortunately, we don't really need to change much. We can simply choose a different activation function, and we got it. So instead of our step function with the binary output, we will use a sigmoid function. Now, I will cover it much more in future lessons, but until then, Every time you hear the word sigmoid, just imagine the following formula. 1 divided by 1 plus the number e in the power of minus the weighted sum, where e can be found on your calculator, and if you check, it equals 2.71828. But the only problem is, the step function is where we used to store the threshold, or the bias so we will need to include it in a different spot. We will simply add it to the weighted sum, which will no longer be just features times weights, but rather features times weights plus bias. So let's calculate it by using values from our previous examples. We will focus on the very first set of features where the weighted sum would be 0.1 times 0.4 plus 0.5 times 0.2, plus 0.2 times 0.6, and lastly, plus our bias, which was 0.5. And once we calculate it, we get the result of 0.76. Next, we will pass this result into our activation function. So the sigmoid of 0.76 is actually 1 divided by 1 plus e, in the power of minus 0 0.76, which will result in 0 0.68, and this value represents the prediction, or output, or y-hat of our model. And once we get a prediction, we can then pass it into our cross entropy loss function, where we will get the negation of 0 times log 0 0.68 plus 1 minus 0 times log 1 minus 0.68. If we calculate it, we would get 0 0.49, and this value represents the individual loss of our first feature. And now we can finally move on with updating the weights. So commonly, gradient descent is explained with a bunch of scary formulas, a lot of Greek letters, and all kinds of weird doodles. But in the end of the day, it all comes down to two small and simple modifications, where the first one goes as follows. A new weight equals the old weight plus something called a learning rate. We will then multiply it by the target minus the prediction, and then we will multiply it again by the current input feature. And in more mathematical terms, it would look a lot like this. But what is exactly a learning rate? Learning rate is a very small floating point value, such as 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. This value makes sure that the weights are updated gradually, without any drastic changes. The reason we need it is because data is sometimes unpredictable, and if we make a big change, our model might miss something very important. For example, if our steps are too big, we might miss the lowest point of our function. We would think it's point B, 
while it is actually point A we're looking for. But if our steps are smaller, it becomes much, much harder to miss it. The second modification is performed on a bias, where the new bias equals the old bias plus the learning rate times the target minus the prediction. And in mathematical terms, that equals B plus alpha times Y minus Y hat. So here, the bias doesn't really represent a threshold anymore. It's more of a constant value that helps us tune our model to perfection. So let's enter the values from our example into those formulas, where our first new weight would be 0.4 plus 0.1, which would be our learning rate, times 0 minus 0.68. And we will then multiply this expression by 0.1, which represents the first value of our first feature. And once we finish calculating, we would get 0.393, and this would be our first new weight. Then we will calculate the second new weight, which will equal to 0.2 plus 0.1 times 0 minus 0.68 times 0.5, which is the second value of our first feature. And after we perform the calculations, we see that our second new weight would be 0.166. And we will, of course, do the same with our third and final weight. Now, in terms of bias, our new bias would be 0.5 plus 0.1 times 0 minus 0 0.68, which equals 0.43. We will then replace the old values with the new ones, and we will move on to the second set of features where we will update both the weights and the bias even further. And if everything works properly, our average loss will decrease each time we go over the entire set of features. Now, a single iteration over the entire set of features is called an epoch. Since our data only consists of four features, our epochs will be quite short, but usually we are dealing with huge amounts of data, so epochs can take up to 20 or 30 minutes depending on how big your dataset is. After each epoch, we take all the individual loss values of our features and we calculate the average loss. So in the case of our example, we would take 0.49 plus 0.18 plus 0.55, plus 0.18 again, and we will divide it by 4. This will give us the average loss of 0.35, and this would represent the loss of our first epoch. So the average loss is how we measure the performance of our model. If everything is perfect, the loss will decrease after each epoch. But if it's increasing, that means we must have missed something and we will need to review our calculation. And while we can always calculate with a pen and paper, it is much faster and much more accurate to do with code. So let's use our Python skills to implement gradient descent. This time, we will do an exercise. So we will begin with some starter code, where I've included everything besides the gradient descent function. So I highly recommend you guys to give it a try on your own and only then check how I did it on my end. And let's quickly go over the expected arguments as well as the return statement. So we can see right away that this function takes in only one feature at a time. We can also see that it takes in the entire set of weights. And this is because each of our features as well as our set of weights are both lists with three items. And then another important detail we can see here is that our function returns a tuple, where the first value is our new list of weights and the second value is our new bias. And now once we went over this basic information, we can finally begin defining our function. And let's begin by creating an empty list for our new set of weights. And just for the sake of readability, let's get rid of this comment and we can then move on with iterating over our feature in our set of weights. So right below our empty new list, we will type for x w in zip feature 
weights. And for each of our features, we would like to create a new weight, which we will call new W, just not to get confused with the new weights list that we created above. And if you guys remember, our new weight equals the old weight plus the learning rate times the target minus the prediction. And lastly, we will multiply it by our current feature, which is represented by x. And then right below, we can append this expression to our new set of weights. So we will add dot append and we will specify new w. And now we are only left with updating the bias. So right below our initially empty list of new weights, we will type new bias, which will equal to the old bias plus the learning rate times the target minus the prediction. And actually, if you guys want to keep it on the short side, we can simply reassign our old bias variable to a brand new value with the plus equals operator. And now the only thing left to do is to update our return statement, which if you guys remember, consists of a tuple of the new weights and the new bias. But before we click on the run button, let's fix my typo first. This is how you spell weights, not how I spelled it earlier. And once we fixed it, we can go ahead and click run. We will then check our results below and we see that on our first epoch, our loss was 0.339. Then on our second epoch, it was 0.331. On our third epoch, it's already 0.32. Then it would be 0.31. So it looks like our model trains perfectly. In the next video, we will talk about training and I will show you how to do it step by step. We will also work with a bigger data set with over four features. And we will also implement everything we have learned so far from scratch. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave it a like, maybe subscribe to my channel or turn on the notification bell, leave me a comment or share this video with your other fellow artificial intelligence enthusiasts. My name is Maria and I will see you very soon in a brand new tutorial, so don't go too far.